Welcome to the advanced video on drag. In this week's episode, we're going to talk about how to calculate drag. So if you watch the beginner episode, you learned that there are two main categories of drag, parasitic and induced drag. And inside of parasitic drag, you have pressure drag and skin friction drag. Calculating pressure drag is a little bit more involved and mathy. And so to actually calculate the pressure drag and therefore the total parasitic drag, we're actually going to refer you to Dr. Ning's Mechanical Engineering 415 textbook. If you Google BYU Mechanical Engineering 415, you will be able to find a link to that website where you can download the textbook for free and learn about these calculations. But for now, we will talk about how to calculate the skin friction drag. So skin friction is the friction that you get from just the air rubbing against the surface of the airplane, like the wing or the main fuselage of the airplane. And it's exactly the same as if you were rubbing your hands together. You get friction between your hands. You also get friction between the airplane and the air. And that friction is dependent on a couple different things. Primarily, it's dependent on something called the Reynolds number. If you're unfamiliar with the Reynolds number, go ahead and check out our quick video on what the Reynolds number is and why it's useful. But for now, we're going to assume that you have that knowledge or that you just paused to watch that video. So, the Reynolds number is basically a measurement of how fast our airplane is going um, mixed with some other properties of the air. So for now, we're going to think about it more in terms of how, whether or not it makes the airflow turbulent or laminar. And laminar just means smooth, basically. So if you have laminar airflow, it's smooth airflow, it hasn't become turbulent as it usually does eventually, then the skin friction coefficient is 1.328 divided by the square root of the Reynolds number. And so you see, as the Reynolds number increases, we actually get a smaller coefficient of skin friction drag. However, you have to actually do some more of the math to see what that actually means for your airplane, because having a different Reynolds number can imply a couple different things. However, if the airflow is turbulent, then we get a different equation for the skin friction drag coefficient. If the airflow is turbulent, then our skin friction coefficient actually depends on 0.074 and the Reynolds number raised to the 0.2 power. And so having turbulent versus laminar airflow can imply different trade-offs for your airplane. Turbulent airflow will actually have a greater skin friction coefficient, and you probably suppose that. And these are different things to consider. Turbulence is not always bad. In fact, turbulence is desired to reduce pressure drag because turbulent air actually leaves a smaller wake and therefore has smaller pressure drag. More on that if you go check out some other resources, including Dr. Ning's textbook that we referred you to earlier. And we'll include a link down to it below. Now if we want to calculate the induced drag, there are two ways that both will get you the same answer. One way is if this is the back of an airplane, we're looking at the back of the wing, we get these trailing wingtip vortices, which we talked about in the beginner video, aren't necessarily due to a lot of the theories that you'll oftentimes hear. Go and watch that video to, to learn about that. But what we can do is we can calculate the energy left behind in this swirliness of the air. And if we do that, we can calculate the total energy or the total momentum left behind, and then we can use that to calculate the total drag on the airplane. Another way to calculate the induced drag is to change the way we think about lift and drag for a moment. Instead of considering lift and drag, we'll just say that there's one total force on the airplane. It goes mostly up, but also a little bit backwards. And this force is what we usually will use to help define our lift and our drag. However, there is just one net force on the airplane. And the way that we calculate this is by going back to something we talked about when we learned about lift. We said that lift was calculated 
using the circulation of the air as, where lift is equal to the density of the air times the velocity of the air times the circulation of the air. And you, there's all kinds of mathematical ways to calculate the circulation, and computers do it all the time. However, there's a more general way to write this, and that's to use a cross product, which if you haven't learned about in your school yet, you will definitely learn about when you take either math 302 or 314. So if we instead replace some of those terms, we keep the density, but now we use what's called the total velocity. And the total velocity is the free stream velocity, that's the speed that the airplane is traveling at, plus the downward velocity of the air that's getting pushed down by the wind. And so we have the free stream velocity coming in, and we have the velocity of the downwash going down, and that's the total velocity of the air. And then we also have the swirliness of the air. And if we treat this as a vector, and we treat this also as a vector, then our output of a cross product, as you'll learn in your math classes, is also a vector. And it is that total force vector. And then we can calculate how much of the force is pointed backwards, and how much of the force is pointed upwards. And when we do that, we can get our lift and our drag. But this force is always pointed diagonal. It can't just be pointed straight up. We'll always have a backward component to this total force. And therefore, if you have lift, you must also have drag. 